let's take a look at how to update our game world or our application. So for that, uh, let's go to the documentation and if you scroll down, you will find the here the window class under the arcade package API. So let's open this. And you will find all sorts of methods here. Here is the on draw we are using to actually draw our, our uh, things on, on the screen. Uh, here we have also on key presses, on mouse uh, motion, mouse press, and all, all sorts of uh, input event handling uh, stuff. And what, what I'm interested in is the on update method. So move everything, perform collision checks, do all the logic here. Okay, and it has only one parameter, which is the so-called delta time, the time interval since the last time the function was called. So the delta time technically is, is the uh, number of milliseconds uh, since the last uh, function call. And we have also here the update which takes also a uh, delta time. So here it says move everything for better cons consistency in naming use uh, in naming use on update instead. So we are going to use the on update. So let's create this function on update or method. And as you can see, it takes a delta time, which is a type of float. So in the Python version 3.6, you can give it the type, although it is not needed so I'm going to delete this delete this so and first of all I'm just going to print out this delta time and in the previous video I, sh I already showed you uh, the frame rate so you have 1 over 60 which is about 0 0.016666 repeating so and now when I print out the delta time you will see that it is the this is 0 0.016, 0 0.016, sometimes it is 0 0.017, and, but it looks like it is consistent, so 0 0.016. So, and the on update is, is if you want to move something on your screen, so I have here this uh, circle field with 10 segments, so you can just take a look at here, so here it says I added uh, 10 segments to it. You can just count the segments. So here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the 10th segment. And now let's move this circle. So I'm going to create two member variables here. Let's say it's CX for circle X. Let's set it equal to 100 and duplicate this line, and this will be the CY, and uh, its value will be also 100. And here, when I draw the circle, I'm going to replace these two values with self.cx and self.cy. So this is the center point of the circle, its x and y position. And this is the radius of the circle. And now, in the update function, I'm just going to update these two values. So self.cx plus equals, let's say, 300. 300 and uh, let's multiply this by the delta time and I'm also going to do this for the CY CY and plus equals let's say 100 and now let's run it and now our circle moves to the right so it moves faster on X uh, than on Y and Y need why it is good to actually multiply it by this delta time. So let's say the let's say you have a game where the frame count or the, or the FPS is uh, set to 60 frames per second, and for some reason, let's say the uh, this uh, FPS drops down to 30 or 40, you still want to maintain the same um, amount of movement. So. Here I just created something, so if you have 160, so the update rate, which is equal to 0 0.016666, and this multiplied by 300, you get 5 pixels. So it will move every every of these uh, on update call, it will move 5 pixels. And if you have 
to, uh, the frame rate set to 130, you will get 0.0333 repeating, so 1 over 30. And if you multiply this by 300, you will get 10 pixels on each update rate. So, and because this runs twice as this, technically you will get the uh, same amount of movement. So, you should put everything which is which is moving or which will be which needs needs to be updated like the physics and the collisions and uh, this stuff to the on update method and now just make it a little bit more interesting let's create something like a bouncing ball so i'm going to create two new uh, member variables of this my game window and i'm going to name it the first will be the x speed and I'm going to set it, let's say, to 300, and I'm also going to create a Y speed, and let's set its value to 150. And now, in the in the on update uh, method, instead of adding to it the static uh, 300, I'm going to add to it the X speed. So C X plus equals the X speed, and C Y plus equals the Y speed. And uh, here. I'm going to ask, so if self.cx is bigger than the window's width, which is 1280, or the self.cx is less than, than the window uh, width, so I mean less than zero, so if it is bigger than uh, 1280 or it is less than zero, then we are going to set the x speed, so self self.x speed will be we are going to mm, multiply it by negative one so times equals negative one and let's do this for the y so if self.cy cy is bigger than the windows height so 720 or self.cy is less than zero then we are going to multiply the cell that y speed by negative one, so times equals negative one. And now we should have something like a bouncing ball. Although I'm although I'm going to make this uh, give it a little bit more segments, so it looks like more as a circle. And let's try it out. So, and as you can see now our circle is bouncing. Uh, one thing to actually uh, notice if I run this, so if it collides with the edge, as you can see the half of the circle is outside of the window, so because it collides at the circle, I, I mean at the center of the circle, so to actually uh, make it a little bit better, you can just subtract or subtract from this equation uh, the circle's radius, which is minus 50. And here, when you check for if self.cx is less than zero, uh, you add it the radius of the circle. And also here, when you check for the cy, so 720 minus the circle's radius, which is 50, you, you just remember that here we are setting the circle radius. And here, when we check for the cy is less than zero, we add it the circle's radius. And now, if you run it, it will exactly collide at the circle's edge. So, and now we have we just created a simple bouncing ball example in arcade library.